To get started, we'll initialize a new Expo project by running Expo init. For the Expo project, we'll choose a blank template. Next, we'll change into the new directory and install AWS Amplify Core and AWS Amplify Data Store using either Yarn or NPM. Amplify Data Store for React Native has a dependency on NetInfo, so we'll use Expo to install React Native Community slash NetInfo. Next, we'll initialize the Amplify app by running NPX Amplify app. Next, we'll open the project in our text editor to edit our GraphQL schema. To edit the GraphQL schema, go to amplify slash backend slash API slash schema.graphql. The app that we'll be creating is a messaging app, so we'll create a message type, giving it an ID, a title, and a color. Amplify will introspect your GraphQL schema to generate the models needed to interact with the data store API. To create these models, run npm run amplify-modelgen. We should now see a new src slash models directory in our project containing our models. Next, we'll initialize the Amplify backend in the cloud by running Amplify init. Here, we'll give the environment a name, choose our default text editor, and choose our AWS profile. After the project's been deployed, we should now see a new Amplify folder as well as an AWS exports.js file located in the root of our project. To deploy the API, we can now run Amplify push. When asked if we'd like to generate GraphQL code locally, we can choose no because we'll be using the data store API. After the API has been deployed, open up the project in your text editor. Here, we'll open app.js and delete everything that's there for now. We'll first import Amplify from Amplify Core, the config from the AWS exports file created by the CLI, and then we'll call amplify.configure passing in the config. Next, we'll import React as well as the use state and use effect hooks from React. From React Native, we'll be importing the text, view, text input, and button components. From Amplify Data Store, we'll import the Data Store API, and then we'll import the message model from the source slash models directory. We'll next create some initial state to hold the message info, including the message title and the message color. Next, we'll create the app component. Next, we'll create two pieces of state using the use state hook, some form state to hold the form state, and a messages array to hold the messages coming back from the Data Store API. Next, we'll create an onChange text handler to update the form input as the user types. Next, we'll create fetch messages and create message functions. Fetch messages will query the data store API by calling data store.query passing in the message model. We'll then call update messages passing in the messages array to update the messages state. Create message will first check to make sure that the form state title is not empty. If it isn't, we'll then call datastore.save, passing in a new instance of the message, passing in the form state. Finally, we'll call update form state, passing in the initial state to clear the form. Next, we'll create a use effect hook. When the component loads, we'll first call fetch messages. We'll then create a new subscription using datastore.observe, passing in the message model. When a new message arrives, we'll then again call fetch messages. In the UI, we'll create a title, two text inputs, attaching the on change text handler, a placeholder, the value, and some styling. In the UI, we'll display the color currently set by the input. Finally, we'll create a button with the title of create message that will invoke the create message function when pressed. 
We'll then map over the messages, setting the background color to the message color and the title to the message title. Finally, we'll create styles for container, input, heading, message background, the message, and the message title. We'll then set the default export as the app component. To test everything out, we can run Expo Start. I'll first run this on the iOS simulator. To test out the real-time functionality, I'll also open the app in a web browser. When we create a new message on the web, we see that it comes through in real time in the iOS app. To test out the offline functionality, we can open the network tab and set our network to be offline. When we create a new message, we see that the message updates only in the web UI. Next, we can go back into the Network tab, set our connection to be online, and see that the request does indeed go through and the message is sent to our iOS app. To view our project in the Amplify dashboard at any time, we can open our CLI and run Amplify Console. Here, we'll see a link to our API, including the AppSync API in the DynamoDB database.